Hi everybody, welcome to Game Gorgon. My name is Krug. I'm Indigo. Today we're here to talk to you once again about the Druid in the Pathfinder playtest. This time for real, coming out of a book and not out of a blog post. <laughs> uh, enjoy. Oh. <laughs> Do you bring it back the creepy kiss yep. again? Yep. Oh god, please don't. All right, so first, what is the Druid? If you haven't seen the episode before this, or this is the first time ever getting into a role-playing game, Druids should still have like a general understanding of what it is, yep. just like in the world. A druid is someone who is so in tune with nature that they have uh, partially become with uh, with nature as a whole. Mm -hmm. It has many facets because it's not just about you know trees and and animals, but yeah. it's it's all things that that nature. Yeah, is. including like stuff like the weather. This was a really long segment. We could have just said the druid's basically a nudist. The Druid excels in wisdom, much like the cleric that we went over before. Shameless plug of our cleric video. The Druid's gonna be difficult to fool, gonna be difficult to sneak up on, all the stuff that comes ah! with. They've got a high level perception yeah. due to the fact that they're wiser. Yeah, going yeah. wisdom's a really good uh, ability for skills. Mm -hmm. It's really skill heavy and it makes the Druid really fun, I think, to play in a lot of different situations. Mm -hmm. Also makes them really strong spellcasters. It also makes them really strong spellcasters. Druids, I mean, we're gonna get into this. They have their own school of spellcasting, which is primal, primal spellcasting, mm -hmm. which is really good. Before we go into that, let's talk about where they kind of fail. Mm -hmm. uh, and originally when writing this, I was saying charisma is probably one of the ones that it, you could probably dump. Thinking about it more, there are multiple orders that you choose from that yeah. has diplomacy or or intimidation, which are both charisma-based skills. So I'm gonna change my mind, and I think it's it's very difficult for me to do this. Uh, I'm gonna say intelligence. Boom! He drops the int for the first time since we started recording this, over dropping it for the barbarian. Yeah. It's out of left field, nobody expected it, but here it is. But I agree that with this class, it's probably yeah. It's probably not the best place to. Well, and so originally when they released the playtest, the Druid actually had four plus its int yeah. modifier, and it's been dropped down from four to and three. And it would have been way easier to say dump Drop int. int. Now, as a Druid, what else do you get? Now, we've talked about orders before, and the format's basically staying the same. Essentially, you're going to get uh, proficiency in a skill, mm -hmm. you're going to get a feat, and mm -hmm. you're going to get a spell that you can cast with spell points instead yeah. of spell slots. Exactly. Now, the orders that you can choose from are Animal, Leaf. That's the one where you can't wear any pants. Yeah. Then there is Storm, and then Wild. Yep. Which, Wild's a little interesting because it actually changes like how you use your strength stat as a whole, because with the Wild one, you get the ability to Wild Shape. I'm sorry. Here, right, I think. Because he said, because with the Wild one, and I was like, baby, you're the Wild one. <laughs> you get to wild shape a mm -hmm. number of times based off of your strength modifier, um, which is really interesting because it then makes strength a significantly higher yeah. stat. Yeah, because if it was just giving you like athletics, like who cares? Yeah, it doesn't. It's not enough of a benefit for you to dump points into strength. Yeah, and the other three I don't think have, oh, I don't feel that they've got anything that makes you push a specific stat mm -hmm. other than the wild one mm -hmm. because Wild is literally telling you, hey, this stat now matters. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> exactly. What is your favorite order? Let us know down in the comments. Now, Primal Spellcasting, we've already talked about. It's just a school of spells that you get to choose from. Mm -hmm. They are also very similar to the Cleric in the fact that every morning they wake up and they determine what spells that they're going to prep and how many of each individual spell. As long as it's before they put on their makeup. I'm sorry. <sighs> Not only that, they also get a number of spell points equal their wisdom modifier, right. which allows them to cast an ability based off of their order. Mm -hmm. Last but not least is Wild Empathy. This is kind of the like, the tree hugger aspect of it where you as a druid can use diplomacy to relay information or requests to animals. Mm -hmm. So like animals are unintelligent by definition in Pathfinder and can't know languages. And so therefore this is like the, one of the few ways without magic that you can communicate with animals. And yeah, they're gonna be simple requests and simple bits of information, but probably really useful in certain situations. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, it, it adds a whole new like way of communication. Like if you don't choose a form of you yeah. know, the order that is animal specific. Yeah, yeah. 
That's the sound an eagle makes when it's afraid. Now, m for me, I feel that the druid has a lot of potential, mm -hmm. but I feel that the, the thing that makes the druid the most fun is the wild shape. Agreed. It is very much nerfed. It is. It, it is very, very weak. At least to begin with, you basically can turn into a mouse or a cat or a small dog or stuff like that. Yeah. And that's about it's it. It's a utility spell unless you very heavily invest into it. Turn around and go the way of the animal and get an animal companion. Way OP. Oh, exactly. Like, you, first of all, you can, you have an entire, another attack that your, your, your animal can do. You've got more control over it. You can spend those same feats, less of them, in fact, to get them to an actual, like, combative point. Mm -hmm. There's some balancing issues there that yes. need to be worked and, on. And maybe, maybe it's their intent, right? Pa Paizo's intent to make the shape-shifting more of a utility feature and not a combat feature. Maybe they thought it was too ubiquitous as a combat feature, and so they're like, nope, we're gonna make this utility only. But if that was an intentional choice, I'd say let's not, because it's really, like, if we're talking in terms of WoW, the class fantasy of the druid is turning into a bear and mauling somebody's face off. And if you're gonna, like, intentionally take that away from me, I'd say it's a mistake. And I can even see them looking at what D&D did with the druid and going, that is way too strong. It was very let's pull it back a little unnecessarily bit. strong. But instead of pulling it back a little bit, they're like, all right, let's pull it back a lot of it and then give it a little bit as yeah. it goes. And then we'll, like, salt bay. Yeah. All right, everyone, head down to the comments and let us know what do you think of the Druid. Uh, and uh, while you guys are down there, make sure to hit the like button, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, uh, and then also head over to Twitter and talk to us. You can talk to me on Twitter at IndigoQT. And you can get me at CrewQT on Twitter. You can also reach both of us at underscore QTimes on Twitter or at QTimes on Instagram. We've been Game Gorgon. See you guys later. I forgot that. One day, our, one day our outro sandwich won't be soggy. <laughs>